I do not like to die. Not a fan. In fact, I love not dying. As you may be able to tell from my beautiful, youthful, lifelike state. But that isn't to say that I haven't had my moments of close calls. Whoa! Nah, uh, uh. <laughs> One time when I was in college, I was trying to plug something into the outlet under my table. I didn't want to fully get out of my chair and get on my hands and knees just to plug something in. So I just try and reach the outlet and plug it in without looking. I know, you don't need to say anything. But I kept missing the plug that I wasn't looking at. So I used my finger to try to find the outlet and then guide the plug towards the outlet. And I was just thinking that I would take my finger away before I got too close, but... <laughs> I shocked myself with an actual outlet in real life. This is something I did and I lived and I'm thankful for that, but I am self-aware enough to say that is not my brightest moment. That could have been it for me. I never imagined myself going out that way. I'm going to be honest. I always thought when I die, it would be cool and probably impressive somehow. Like sacrificing myself to save Earth from an asteroid. This is for you, Earth. Yeah, he blew up the wrong one. But it turns out I'm highly likely to die in a fork in outlet related death, which is kind of disappointing, but also pretty in character of me. An outlet? You died from touching an outlet? Yeah. <coughs> yes. <sighs> All right, come on. I guess I'm not really upset that this is the way that I am. I'm just thankful I've walked away from most things unscathed, or at least moderately scathed. <clears throat> Sometimes things are just an accident though. Like this one time involving a microwave. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You're someone that's on the internet. <gasps> How did you know? Wait, seriously? On the internet, there are bad things, such as people who want your data. Give me that. <laughs> well, you can use NordVPN to protect yourself while you're online. Also, NordVPN is multifunctional, so you can use it as an ad blocker. This is all well and good, but what good is any of this if you can't use it on multiple devices? Oh. Well, thankfully, you can install NordVPN on all of your devices. Use promo code Ice Cream Sandwich to get NordVPN's two-year plan plus four extra months for free. Dude, Oops, sorry. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. So, the microwave event. It was just some random night that I was at home and I wanted some candy, but my parents are crazy and like to freeze their candy. Like if you wanted a Three Musketeers, it would be in the freezer. You know the delicious candy bar known for its fluffy and chocolatey center? Well, yeah, they like that solid. And I can't stand frozen candy, so I wanted to melt it. And thankfully, we have technology at our disposal. I intelligently thought to myself, microwave make candy warm. Candy go in microwave. This was at the time when I was a lot shorter, so I got a stool to access the microwave easier. I put the candy in the microwave and pressed start, but the candy was still in the wrapper, and the wrapper was some kind of foil or metallic. So plasma, of all things, started arcing in the microwave. Oh my goodness. I freak out and I lean on the shelving that the microwave was seated on as I use my other arm to turn it off. But the shelving wasn't bolted down or something. So the microwave tilts onto me, which I instinctively catch. And suddenly I am holding a bomb. Father, assistance. Thankfully, my dad runs over and pulls the plug and saves the day. Thanks dad. The candy was ruined though. Obviously, so I just didn't have any candy that night. No, no, no! Which is, perchance, the biggest tragedy of that night. I am now aware, you don't have to say anything, I am now aware that candy in microwave wouldn't have given me the result I wanted anyway. But in the moment, it seemed right. In the spirit of the Home Alone franchise, I am at least now aware of how to weaponize everyday household items in the event of a potential intruder. <laughs> Yeah, come here. Stand over there. No, wait, where are you going? <laughs> there was this one Valentine's Day I was setting up for a lovely and romantic dinner for Kelly and I. It was in my dorm room at the time, and I did the best that I could with what I had. Card table with tablecloth, nice plates, fancy glassware, candles. But what's a romantic dinner without flowers? It's a cliche, sure, but it's a staple, and staples are important. <laughs> except for the store Staples, which I'm surprised is still in business. Either way, this was back during college and it was a small college town that I was in. And there was only one floral shop that I was aware of. I've never seen 
a store like this. I thought it was so strange. I wasn't sure if it was actually in business. It was way too dark for the time of day it was. There were a lot of old timey dolls placed around randomly and definitely weren't making me very uncomfortable. And nobody was there, not even the employees. I didn't think I was in the right spot. So before I left, I rang the bell at the front and I was going to ask the hopefully present employee if there was a shop nearby that sold flowers. Someone does come to the front and I ask them, do you have any roses? Yeah, we have roses. Follow me. Fantastic. I wasn't wrong. This was a flower shop. I follow her behind the desk and into the greenhouse section of the building. The clear tarp that covers the structure had fallen inward and was touching a lot of the plants. I mean, if you could still grow plants when the tarp is half caved in, then why not? It's just strange. She moves past the tarp and into the back. I kind of have to duck and push the tarp out of the way to follow her. We end up in the back of the building where the boiler room is. The room was dark, messy, and full of random unorganized tools. The strangest, however, was the seven bulky, ominous men sitting on buckets in a circle staring at me. These guys did not seem to work at this establishment, and they did not seem friendly. And also, who hangs out in a dark, messy room like this? I was starting to get weird feelings at this point. The lady who was helping me said, stay there for a moment and starts moving further back into the boiler room. The men are still staring at me. Whatever conversation they were having wasn't happening anymore Um, because of my presence, I assume. She comes back with this bucket with just a bunch of roses in it. Man, what's with this place in buckets? And then she tells me they are $30 each. $30 per rose? What kind of scam is this place? $30. I suddenly am very aware of the situation that I'm in. Why am I in the back of a flower shop in a dark room? Why didn't they bring the flowers to me in the front? Why are all these men silently staring at me? Why are the roses $30? I think this is a drug trade and I just interrupted their meeting. I am in the least Ooh. safe place to be right now. And I can't just not buy a rose. They'll probably think I'm an undercover cop or something just trying to get close to them and gain information. I am incredibly vulnerable. They could beat me up. Take my money uh, 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 and stuff. I don't know. I have to buy one so they don't get suspicious. Plus, they're still staring at me. <clears throat> yes. One rose, please, I said unsuspiciously. I do the transaction and I get out of there back outside where it's safe. Finally, I have my rose and all of the pieces for my romantic dinner. But now I also have a lesson learned. Never do business in an establishment where the lights are off, you think it's closed, and the roof is caved in. I wish I was more aware of things, but that's just not who I am. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Things are crazy, like microwaves. Ah! <laughs>